because there's been a second night of mass attempts by some migrants to storm the Channel Tunnel in order to try to get to Britain. Groups of up to 150 migrants made coordinated attacks on fences, in some cases throwing bricks at trucks or entering the tunnel. All freight services have been suspended in Calais as the authorities try to move the migrants away from the particular area. The operator Eurotunnel says a migrant died overnight as 1,500 people made a fresh attempt to storm the terminal. Eurotunnels say the pressure they're under exceeds that which an operator can reasonably handle. Let's talk now to Nigel Farage, who is the leader of UKIP. And I gather, Mr Farage, uh, some migrants surrounded your car and tried to get in. When was this? What yeah, happened? I travel through the Eurotunnel regularly. I, that's, that's how I get to Brussels and Strasbourg uh, for my work in the European Parliament. And I have to say, this situation has been pretty rough around the tunnel now for six or seven weeks. Uh, there are times when I've been there when the lorries, uh, you know, are, are queuing for so long you can't get the car in quickly. Uh, I've been surrounded by scores of migrants running across the road, uh, trying to get in the back door, all of that sort of thing. I found it fairly intimidating. Uh, my impression, my feeling at Calais, um, is that things there are now virtually lawless. Uh, there have now been nine migrants killed this year trying to get through the tunnel. It seems to me, unless something radical is done, it's only a matter of time before a British holidaymaker or a British lorry driver gets killed there too. Uh, so has this happened to you more than once then, and when did this happen? Yes. Yeah, I mean, the worst experience I had of it was about four or five weeks ago. Um, it, there was a time when it was the ferry port uh, that attracted the big hordes of migrants, but now, uh, down by the ferry port, there are some very big, strong, secure fences, so their attention has shifted to Eurotunnel. And, of course, the weakness of Eurotunnel is that the SNCF, the French National Railway Line, obviously goes through there, so you've only got to go a mile or two further down the track to find fencing that is, frankly, pretty inadequate. Um, and I, I'm surprised that the French authorities um, haven't done more uh, to stop this situation. I sometimes get the impression they'd be quite pleased if everybody just got on the next train and disappeared off to Britain. Why do you think that it's only a matter of time, as you said, before a British holidaymaker or, or, a, or a lorry driver is killed? Because the intensity... Uh, the intensity and the desperate efforts of those who want to get to Britain, and we understand why they do, uh, is becoming more and more severe. And just talk to the lorry drivers who, you know, are having bricks thrown in front of their tyres, every attempt being made to actually stop the lorries so that people can try to get on. So the situation is bad. Some truck drivers today are calling for the army to be brought in. Now, I'm not... Uh, brought in at Dover, I'm not sure how that would help things in Calais. What's your own view? Well, I'm surprised the French haven't called the army in their side uh, because, you know, the French often do this when, when they've got a real civil problem. As far as we're concerned, do we need the army at Dover? Well, actually, the real problem uh, is in Calais. Mm. The problem in Dover is because we've put all our eggs in one basket, because virtually all of our freight uh, and nearly all of our holiday traffic goes on that Dover-Calais route, uh, we simply haven't got the border agency staff to check every car and check every vehicle. And I think strategically, longer term, it would make so much more sense if our traffic to and from uh, Europe was, was using other ports like Ramsgate as well. Right. Isn't the, I mean, you know, the deeper question is why people who are so desperate will leave parts of the Middle East, West Africa, to travel thousands of miles across many, many countries in order to get to Britain? Isn't, isn't there something that Europe should do to address the well, causes? Well, what Europe has done... Uh, with the migrant tide that is now coming across the Mediterranean, uh, basically the European Commission have said that anyone that lands in Greece or in Italy can stay. Uh, and it's because of that policy that we're seeing the massively increased pressure at Calais. I think the European Union needs to fundamentally rethink, frankly, what it's doing. Uh, and why are they so desperate to get to Britain? Well, firstly, our economy is, is performing far better uh, than the Eurozone. Uh, secondly, uh, we have re regressively a big cash black market in this country. And thirdly, anyone that comes to Britain illegally knows they're very unlikely to get caught. And if they are caught, their chances of being sent back are very, very small. So we could actually, as a country, our government send out a message that says that anybody who illegally comes to Britain via this route will not be allowed to stay. But there aren't that many getting to Britain. The problem is at Calais, isn't it? 
Well, we don't know how many are getting to Britain. You know, one estimate is that, is that 500 or so in the last month have illegally uh, gained access to Kent. We don't know what the numbers are. What we do know is that senior British politicians over the last few years, such as Nick Clegg and even Boris Johnson, have sent out messages saying that any illegal immigrant would receive an amnesty. So we're seen as a soft touch. We're seen as a good place to come. And I but think we should you, try do you really to reverse think, that. Do you really think Ethiopians heard what Nick Clegg or Boris Johnson suggested a number of years ago? Um, I think everybody knows the British economy is doing well and, and, and people know if they come to Britain illegally, they're unlikely to be removed. Mm. Uh, in terms of uh, Greece and Italy, uh, yeah. um, Europe saying that those who've arrived in Greece and Italy, and there are many tens of thousands, they can effectively stay. That was pretty recently. I mean, the numbers have been really increasing for the past six, 12 months or so, haven't they? Yes, they have. I mean, I mean what the European Union have done is they've put into place a common EU asylum policy. The problem is, you know, we're not talking about tens of thousands of people who perhaps genuinely are in fear of their lives. We're talking potentially about millions of people coming over the course of the next few years. And I don't think Europe uh, can cope with that number of people, and I'm certain Britain can't cope with it either. Mm. Um, this news is just arriving uh, with us, Mr Farage. I wonder if you can react to this. It's yeah. to do with the Court of Appeal. It's just breaking now. The Court of Appeal ruling that the government system to detain and fast-track some asylum seekers appealing to stay in the UK is illegal. Uh, the ruling backs an early decision by the High Court and it means the future of the currently suspended system is in doubt. The special detention process handles more than 4,000 cases a year and pl plays a key role in processing claims by suspected illegal migrants such as those arriving via the English Channel. So the, the system to detain and fast-track some of yep. those people is illegal according to the Supreme Court. Well, the Human Rights Brigade, I think, would like to open up our doors to the entire world uh, and nobody uh, would ever be deported. And they, and they make it increasingly difficult uh, for British courts and for British politicians and governments uh, to do the right thing. Uh, whatever, uh, whatever human rights lawyers may say, or the Supreme Court may say in this case, what is certain is that 80% of British people want us to have proper border controls and at the moment we don't. Uh, tomorrow, I think you're launching uh, uh, officially, although it feels like this campaign has been going on for some time, <laughs> officially the, um, the no campaign for the uh, head of the in-out referendum. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you're the head of that, are you? Uh, uh Oh, uh, UKIP is the only Eurosceptic organisation that has a membership base and a structure on the ground. And, and what we're saying is this. The Yes campaign are in full flight. Whether it's Tony Blair, President Obama, uh, the CBI, Richard Branson, British universities, you name it, every day the Yes campaign are out there doing something. Uh, the so-called Eurosceptics in Westminster um, appear to want to sit on their hands and, and pursue a wait-and-see policy. And what I'm going to say tomorrow is that UKIP's not prepared to do that. We will begin uh, from the first week of September, the biggest outreach campaign we as a party have ever attempted across this country uh, to wake up Britain and to make sure that Mr Cameron is not allowed to go through this renegotiation without being challenged. Thank you for talking to us. Thank, Thank you, you, Nigel Farage, who is the leader of UKIP. Let's talk.